Hey everybody, welcome back today to Retro Tech. I am Steve, and specifically I want to go over a neck board uh, and how to service a neck board with you. Now, today we're going to be working on a PVM that's an M-series Sony PVM, and the reason I want to go over the neck board is you could run into uh, specific issues where you might be missing a color on your CRT or maybe uh, you have some intermittent power issues or something anyway that might be interrupting your screen whether it's with the colors and there could be a problem coming from your neck board so the most common issues are cold solder joints which just happen from heat and then cooling cycles over time so as a a CRT ages that can happen as well as failing ICs and resistors those are going to be the more common uh, components that are going to give you trouble on your neck board there are a few capacitors on there and capacitor failure can be an issue and then damage in transit so you might have a uh, very common and neck board gets damaged in transit or moving a, P a CRT around whether it's through shipment or whether it's just to move something uh, personally, you can you know a lot of times that gets damaged. So um, today we're going to look at a good neck board on a good working PVM and we're going to do uh, some testing and then we're going to do the servicing. So we will need tools quickly. Then we'll need a screwdriver, utility knife. We'll need the replacement capacitors as well as a good desoldering tool. I'll be using the Hacko FR301 quality soldering iron and then solder and flux alcohol for cleaning and rtv silicone adhesive at the end for uh, reattaching our neck board to our tube so as i could as i showed you on the test screens behind me this one does not have any issues with color but i've already been working on servicing it uh, prior to this with the power supply so we're going to go in now and just while we have it apart uh, service the neck board while we're at it in our process of servicing the entire CRT. So first we need to take our shell off if you're just doing this by itself. That just means taking off the three screws on each side and then the four screws on the back and then sl uh, slipping the rest of that cube off the PVM, slipping it back, make sure that none of those cables get hung up. And here is the back of our wonderful Sony PVM CRT. However, if you're doing this on a different type of monitor that you can open up easily, it will look similar to this. And here's our neck board. It's attached to the back of our CRT uh, tube right there. And you can see that there are some spots that look a little like they've been uh, a lot of heat has built up over the years or uh, you know heat will get in and out this is uh, a, a board that gets a lot of current run through it and most of them are similarly designed you may have a bvm that has or even an ikigami monitor that has a neck board that has more of these components broken out onto other printed circuit boards but this one is all on a one board and 95 percent of your monitors are going to have a neck board like this now to remove the neck board we're going to first need to uh, disconnect some of these connectors and then after we get those disconnected uh, the first two are pretty easy at the bottom there is a ground connection now this could vary depending on what kind of monitor you're working on and even sometimes the Sony PVMM series uh, neck boards can vary a little bit I'm taking my utility knife now and I'm cutting the prior epoxy which was applied around the uh, connector between that little green spacer right here so there's a little green spacer and then there's the glass from the tube and the pins and they go into this plastic connector right here into the back of the neck board and i'm taking my knife and gently you know going in there and uh, cutting through that silicone that's already there and then you just wiggle and pull it pull it out and you'll be fine you want to clean off the remainder of the uh, silicone buildup on the back of the tube and that way you just won't have a huge glop of that stuff when you go back and reapply your new uh, silicone rtv because you'll need a you need a good place to put it and you can put it right back in the same spot it was as it was there but you know just make sure you get it out of the way so you can get in here and service and as, as well as not just service this we're going to make sure we do a nice job of cleaning it so now i've gotten it off the actual board itself we'll take a closer look at the board you can always reference uh, the parts for your specific 
model with your service manual. This Seaboard only has two capacitors in it, so we'll change those capacitors. And I'm also going to reflow the solder on the uh, larger resistors and the ICs that are on this board today. And that will be, again, to make sure that we don't have any cold solder joints develop over time. So again, we're going to use the Hacko FR301. This is my favorite desoldering tool. Um, I would set it today to just over two. You could probably get away with setting it on to exactly because, again, these older printed circuit boards, uh, the older they are in age, then uh, the more susceptible they are to heat generally. This Sony board is going to be a nice board, so it should be able to withstand some heat. But you don't want to set your uh, iron too hot and then burn your traces and your uh, you know your little spots your vias to to go in and install your new capacitors so again just two capacitors in this one and just reference your service manual for the ones that are needed in yours there's a closer look at this circuit board again with the capacitors gone and you'll notice those ic's now those ic's each controls an individual color and they are labeled with a part number and they'll go into the socket here in this C board or this uh, neck board. And so if you have a color that has gone out, one of these components, these major components on this board could have failed or there could be a cold solder joint sometimes because these generate a lot of heat around all these components. You have four major resistors on this board, which you can see are very high elevated off the board and uh, so those will be getting really hot and then you've got the heat sinks that follow up again with one with each color and so again if those fail which you can pull them out of series and test them if you're missing a color it might not be that your tube's bad it might be that you have bad components on your neck board or even just a simple uh, cold solder joint here's a look at the capacitor does it i will you uh, excuse me be replacing these are nishikon new they are 105 degrees celsius rated you want to make sure that if you can find 105 degrees celsius rated and then you can even get in there and try to find extremely high life capacitors sometimes up to 10,000 hours or more at 105 degrees celsius which is a very long time and should pretty much outlast the life of the uh, tube in most conditions and scenarios so just going in quickly here and using my soldering iron a hacko again and um, i'm going to have that set at 740 degrees on there and as i go i do like to use these alcohol pads and an old toothbrush and just clean off the majority of the flux because i do use a lot of flux now you you'll can see the way i i solder is i generally tack those legs into place I come back, I trim the legs, and then I reflow the solder, and then I ultimately clean off any flux residue with alcohol pads. So you can do this the way I'm doing it, or really any way that you personally feel comfortable with soldering, as long as you're getting a good uh, you know, flow of solder and everything's going all right, and you have your own methods, you can definitely do this your own way. Now, as I said earlier, we're gonna go, and before we uh, test this, board out even though we've just replaced the two capacitors i'll go in now and reflow the solder on the ic's as well as those resistors and i'm just going to use some flux and i've got my flux over here in my toolbox i thought i'd just show you what i personally use this is alpha brand rosin paste flux and you can really use anything similar to this um, it is like a plant-based rosin, so I use that. And then this isn't the exact size I normally use. This is actually larger diameter, but I like to use the Alpha Fry Rosin Core Solder. It just has always worked really well for me, and um, I've never had any troubles with that solder. I have bought cheap solder before from just like an electrical hardware store, and it was just terrible and wouldn't melt. So I immediately threw it away and never really used it. So... If you're going to spend some money on your stuff, you know, get a decent iron, but definitely make sure you invest a little bit in flux and uh, good uh, rosin cord, um, you know, solder. So just going in right now and flowing the solder and flux onto 
those uh, components we discussed. This is the third set. And so uh, just go through there and do that. And um, you know, this will this will help extend the life, you know, of your monitor uh, in the way that even without any trouble, uh, this is just extending or, you know, re-solidifying those individual solder joints there so that you do have uh, a solid connection. And if anything fails in the future, you can know that you've done this service already. So you're pretty well set to say that your issue might not be coming uh, from this board if you have an issue in the future with you know color or, or something that uh you may feel like in the past have been dealt with on a board like this you know you can easily eliminate that by uh, doing this kind of maintenance when you're doing your maintenance on the whole monitor itself now i'm going to tell you always to go back and check your work uh I did have some pieces of plastic, kind of brittle plastic, uh, some of the uh, little knobs on there that were for the potentiometers that controlled the screen. Now you can get to the back of it on this one with a screwdriver still, so I wasn't concerned that it broke off on the inside. It's harder to adjust from that potentiometer that way anyway. But uh, just so you know, that can happen. It won't affect the performance of the monitor at all. And what I'm actually doing here is in fast motion, I'm uh, putting my multimeter to uh, continuity and I'm checking the continuity with different points on the board that I would have soldered and making sure that, that there's continuity flowing throughout every uh, solder joint that I touched on the board to make sure that I don't have any issues when I put it back together. So we'll go through now and I'll show you how to just set this right back on here. Before you connect it, you're going to want to make sure that you connect your cable starting from the bottom end first. So that ground cable is uh, easy to connect at the bottom. And then at the top, you've got the multicolored cable. There is usually a little uh, piece over here that is bendable that can hold the cable in place. And then you can slide your board up there and gently press it against the CRT. I'll show you that again from the other side. Just apply a gentle amount of pressure in the center as to not bend any of the uh, or damage any of the pins on the CRT itself because that can ruin the whole project if you push too hard or you bend and break one of those pins and that will cause a lot of trouble. So right in here above where you'll see I didn't actually have the RTV here ready yet silicone so that right there is where you'd reapply that silicone on top of that glass and in between there like it was when we originally took it apart and again um, that is called rtv just the letter r letter t letter v silicone adhesive and it will show you the high temperature rtv there's plenty of brands of it and so that uh, servicing worked well again you'll just want to consider doing this if you have color issues or if you're already servicing your CRT, it's a good idea to change the capacitors. It could be vary from two to sometimes I've seen up to 10 or so on that little PCB, uh, but it's a good idea to change those capacitors as well as reflow the solder on those pivotal and vital components on that neck board. Check your work. And you know, you've gone back and service it. So again, just like when you're doing the service or if you have a problem where you're missing a color and you think it might not be the tube. So last thing to do is just buckle it back up, put it back together. Um, now I, I did this in fast motion, but I think this took me about three minutes to get this to slide on here perfectly. It can be a little bit frustrating. Uh, just make sure that you take your time when sliding it back together like that because uh, you could get hung up on some of the cables on the side from the inside of the PVM on the shell and pull something loose or um, you could be bending some metal in there and um, you know you do you want to make sure that all the screws line up perfectly and it's just a putting back the six screws on the sides and then the four screws on the back and that's all there is to it for reassembling the CRT and uh, then it's ready to be used and uh, so this one again was a 14 m2u um, uh, if you want to see more 
there's already a video about the po power supply unit. Now I have serviced many of these before, and uh, I really love this monitor because I feel like it's a great entry level monitor, but there are also still a large amount of them available. So even if you're not looking for a monitor, sometimes you can find one of these and, and they will have problems with them because sometimes we're, they were used a lot. So um, I just wanted to document a way to go through and service each one of the boards. So the next board we'll be going to will be the main chassis. Um, there will be also a follow-up right up to this available on Patreon for any Patreons who are uh, supporting the channel that way. Thank you very much. And again, thank you guys for watching today, and I'll see you next time with some more monitors and some more retro content.